Okay, we're at sanding the X13. And before you sand them off, it's always a good idea to punch the uh, the drill hole marks. So, yeah. Back to sanding. Okay, there it is. All sanded down. Okay, neck screws are clocking in at like 2.3 mil. Okay, got a 2.5 in the drill, and I'm going for these two. Okay, I measured the shank and not the outside diameter of the screw. We want something that's at least, we want something a little over 3.6 actually to give us a little wiggle room. Okay, drilled out to 3.7 and the next screws to go in smoothly. So, that should take care of that part. Okay, now down at this end, we're going to need about 10 mil of shim. The bridge only needs, the, this surface needs to be up about half this distance. So about here, and then the bridge goes, so the bridge is basically recessed down to about here this line, this laminate line here, and uh, so we don't really need to drill these right here right now, probably the best idea is to actually go ahead and put the neck on, put the pickup on, that'll give, it a, give us a nut, much better picture of exactly how high we want to make the bridge, which tells us how much shim to glue in there and then we drill. Once we get enough shim in, then we put the bracket back in and mark the dots again on top of the shims, and then we drill through the shims and the body all at once. So this thing actually had two neck shims. One of them was still stuck to the body before, so go ahead and put them back in and just see what happens. Um, it might not need them because this doesn't have any curve yet, so, wait and see. Okay, time to spot glue these guys in. A little bit of glue. bit of shim out like that a little bit more glue it's just not exactly easy to do with only one hand and trying to shoot at the same time. A little bit more shim. for that to dry. Okay, so at this point the body would be ready to be finished. As far as the sanding goes, everything feels just fine. And that was just basic sanding with 60 grit. I just hit, you know, all six surfaces, this direction, that direction, this way, that way, that way, and this way. And then I just rounded all the edges everywhere except for inside here and uh, and this is enough bevel here it's comfortable um, the fact that this isn't you know sloped 
it's not a big deal because it's still round and smooth. It's all soft and it's fine, you know, despite the fact that, I mean, you could come in with the grinder and, you know, grind these edges down and, and you could cut a bevel on this and, and grind these edges down some and, and let's see, that would be, that would be about the only places where you could round it out more, so to speak, kind of like the X3 is. But, um, but, you know, while it would make it rounder feeling and more organic feeling, this is, this is perfectly fine and comfortable as far as, like, you know, as far as playability and such goes, because your hand's only going to be coming down to about here normally anyway. Where the neck, where the neck joint is, so yeah, and that's oh, that's that's real nice. And the see, the neck's only going to be this thick. It's going to be a nice thin heel, nice thin heel, plenty of reach, plenty of reach. So, all right, cool. Let's put it together. Okay, well, the neck screws fit, but before I screw it on, it would help if I actually gave it a flat heel. Time for the power planer. Okay, done about all I can with this thing. I'm at just a hair under 20 mil at this end. I'm a hair over like 20.7 at this end. So I'm going to finish up with the leveling beam and the 60 grit basically kind of hit it up this this kind of way or this kind of way with pressing on this side maybe I should take that up some more until I get this down closer to 20 even or perhaps actually I don't know this clocking in it somewhere between like well 199 198 something like that so yeah this is still almost a mil higher than this end, which gives it a, a little bit of incorrect brake angle. So, yeah. Time for a little detail sanding. Well, I got impatient and I tried to take a side swipe of this thing and it took a huge gouge out of it. But, it's thin enough now. So, let me just like clean up a little bit here. Okay, use the sander, got everything nice and smooth again. So, and we're at approximately 20 mil. A little thinner in some spots than others, but hey, that's okay. It'll work. It'll work. Unless it breaks in half, but no, I don't think it's going to break in half. So, okay, now I think we're ready to check and see how our body match is. How well this matches up with the body. Okay. Well, everything still fits, but um, it's obvious that you could lose a lot more here around the uh, heel area of the neck in the way of this material. Yeah, here you can see I've outlined it in red. This is where the spine is, and then everything outside of this red, all this stuff in here, this could all be removed and make this an even, basically you're bringing the heel down to even smaller size. Alright, let me go ahead and tighten these screws up, see what we got. And there it is, it's on, nice and flush. Shouldn't stick out a bit though. Yeah, they're just kind of barely tucked under there. They might not be providing the full desired effect. Might want to move them to the back side of the screw. Have to see how it goes. Fortunately, they don't stick out that much, so they're not going to interfere with anything else. Especially if I put like a elevated depth pick guard thing on this. Okay, so we got a neck. So I guess let me see what this thing feels like. 
Okay. All this red in here is places where I should take the grinder to it and remove more material. Um, let me see what this is like as far as like the thickness goes versus like other like something that still has a heel on it. Well, all I can say is, oh heck yes, it makes a difference. Yeah, um, it's hard to get a good angle on this. So you're talking like that kind of thing versus this kind of thing, as far as the beefiness goes. It's more about this direction than it is this direction. This is just a long one. But, yeah. So, imagine having a heel on a guitar that's this small and a neck that's that thin. It's a big difference. It does make a difference in the way it feels, too. It's, you know, it's like half as much guitar in your hand, so. Okay, now just make sure that the spark mounts up all right. And, but this is trivial. I mean, it's like, you know, I get some get some quarter inch ply here and and cut some shims and tack glue them on there and then uh, slap the bracket back on and mark it with the sharpie for where the drill holes go and drill it the proper size for the screws slap the bracket on and at that point I've got the bridge at the right height and the rest of the build is proven and I could stop at that point you know, in fact, I can stop at this point, to tell you the truth, because I know that, well, the only thing I haven't tested is this joint for the CA glue, and I figured that, hey, if it breaks, then I can just redo it and add two screws back here, so it's not a big deal. So this one already is looking like it's a success. So... Um, hmm, where are we at on time? Twelve and a half minutes. All right, let me ponder for a second. I think, yeah, because look, really all I'm really testing is, is whether this is worth the time and stuff. And yeah, that's nice. So, why not? Okay, so, if, if the benefit of this is worth the hassle of this, and it's not really that bad, so yeah. this is the main this is the biggest pain is cutting this thing out. You know, I should probably like find some better way to do it, like using a router or router and drill bits or phosphor bits or something. But so um so yeah, this is already looking like a successful experiment. This is definitely a, I've got that versus I've got, oh my God, this is a baseball bat by comparison, man. Yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, let me think for a minute as to like, what I want to do. Do I want to finish this thing or do I want to say, okay, that's cool. I might as well take this neck off and you know, put it on a Bavinga build or something like that, you know, go straight, go straight on to the, to the two level body with the Bavinga and the carbon fiber tube and the machine screws and stuff. And I don't know. Let me think for a minute. I'll be back. Okay. I think it needs to be rounder. As in, take the angle grinder to it remove all this material in the red areas here and then the entire bottom of the guitar from here up round all this stuff round all this stuff round that just make it all just like all just like a football just one big round smooth kind of thing and uh yeah it's more labor intensive but rounder and smoother and more organic kind of a shape 
really is a better feeling guitar. As it is now, functionally and, and, and as far as like general smoothness, it's fine in a, in a, in a kind of somewhat blocky Ikea kind of a way. And this is, you know, something you could kick out the door pretty quick. But, um, but grinding it down so that it's all nice and rounded, rounded and smooth and like a piece of sculpture would, I think it, that's the first thing that comes to mind. You know, because in the end, the guitar is a very, it's a very tactile object. You know, it's something that you're, that you're intimate, intimately close with and you're putting your hands on all the time. And so it's got to feel good. And in general, you know, rounder, rounder and so it's, it's, this might sound sexist, but you know, this is one where I have a number of sayings like, what is it? Uh, Girls ice cream and cigars. Uh, girls are like ice cream and cigars, or ice cream is like girls and cigars, or cigars are like ice cream and girls. They all come in like a billion flavors, and almost all of them are yummy. And, and this might sound sexist too, but yeah, you know, soft and curvy like a girl. So. Yeah, because it's about ergonomics and comfort, and soft and curvy is going to make it more ergonomic and comfortable. So, yeah, I'm thinking that this thing needs pull the neck off, angle grind off this material, um, angle grind off this material, angle grind down all this stuff to like about here. So you need this stuff to be kind of square for mounting surfaces for things, but but... I think actually up to like about here actually, not here, but actually all the way back to here, it could all just be rounded down. So, that's my first impression. And other than that, um, I mean it's the X13, it's the next best thing to come down the pike. It's definitely a superior heel to the X12 types. So, um, yeah, I don't see any reason why it shouldn't be completed. I'll probably go ahead and more or less do the whole thing unfinished and then I don't know, either either I'll think of some more improvements that will mean that, you know, this body goes away the way that once I'm done taking everything off this body will be going away the same way that yeah, you want me to line up all the bodies that have been on this guitar I had another, yeah here's another one here that was the one that was just a little bit too short so yeah this was the first body for this guitar and this is the second body on like you know third version, fourth version I think this body was used for like the first two versions of, the, of this guitar and this is the body for the third and fourth versions of the guitar and this is now the fifth version of this guitar and perhaps the second neck yeah it's kind of like the game of, of, of how many parts you replace before it's no longer the same car yeah so um but yeah, that's basically where this where this thing is at. And this is this was originally the X4, and then it was the X4 version two, the X4 version three, and then it was the X12, and now it's the X13, and no, I guess it was the X4. So this is the original neck for it then. Because this is the neck I made after I butchered the X3 neck. Wow, this is an old neck. Like I said, it's an old body too. This is an even older body. But yeah, it's an old guitar. This thing's like, uh, this was like, 
Well, this is before the X5. And the X5 is the first video I ever posted, like two or three years ago, so, yeah. This is an oldie but a goodie, you might say. Okay, so, yeah. The X4 is actually now evolved to the X13. And, uh, yeah, it, it should be rounder. Like the way the X3 is. Let me grab that so you can get an idea. Okay, so here's guitar number three, and in like its third or fourth iteration. And uh, it's actually looking pretty cool these days. Beats the heck out of something that's five feet long with a big old counterweight on the end, which is how this thing started out. And uh, yeah, actually, you know, it's weird now, finally, this guitar is. You know, you take the bar and you put it back in the park position, and this guitar is looking an awful lot like the photo that originally inspired it, which was one of these, like, stick-style cellos or something. A modernistic stick-style cello. But anyway, yeah, if you look at the back of this thing, or even the bars, you can see it's all been rounded. But if you look at the back, even this bar has been rounded. And this bar, all this stuff has all been rounded. But basically, yeah, the entire guitar has been rounded off. All like this. So it's all like round and organic and, and curvy. Everything. It's all curvy and smooth and soft. And this is the guitar that got sanded to 2000. So, yeah. And then, and then when I did this latest upgrade on it and I put on these new bars and such everything got rounded down as to the maximum degree possible it, I couldn't do that much rounding because of the fact that there's so much junk on the back of this thing that you know you had to leave some flat surfaces in order to mount stuff but um, yeah and so this whole thing is just I mean this is like glass still and the rest of it is just super smooth and everything except for you know like right in here what am i hitting i'm hitting wrenches wrenches and springs it's the only unsmooth thing here is wrenches and springs so and maybe the odd bit of wiring but all the rest of it is extra super smooth it's like this is yeah i mean this is this is like this is like holding a piece of lumber and this is like holding a fishing rod or something like that. Something much more ergonomic than a piece of lumber. So, yeah, I think, uh, I think some rounding for this thing might be called for. Get it a bit more in this kind of a shape. So, God is in the details, and this is another case where this sculpted body kind of concept is, it's like fretwork. God is in the details, and that's the difference between an okay and a really wow guitar, so. So, yeah, I guess that's next, and that's probably going to do it for this video. So, until the next one, everybody, have a good one.